said, and this is, where, this is where this next step where I want to be. I want us to all be really clear while we're here tonight. Jesus said, where two or three gather in my name, there I am with them. And I love that scripture. <clears throat> and that's our scripture tonight, you know, <clears throat> um, to understand what we're doing here. And I don't want anybody to miss this, that this isn't just fun and games. This isn't just that. It's fun, hopefully, but we've gathered here um, in the name of Jesus. We've gathered here on a Wednesday night in the middle of the week, in the middle of Holy Week, we've gathered here to praise God. We've gathered here to worship God, meaning give God attention. That's what we've been doing with this, uh, with this singing. We're going to pray, and uh, hopefully we're going to have some laughs, because, you know, it's good when God's people get together. It's good for us to laugh. You agree with that? Say yes. yes. Yeah. You know, who likes a bunch of sour-faced uh, uh, people that walk around in the name of, of, of God? Um, who wants to join with them? So we laugh, and, and we know that when we laugh together, we know it draws us together, it builds community together. We know that we're more attracted to people that are smiling and laughing. We know that inside, <clears throat> endorphins are released, and it lifts us up and cheers us up. So there's lots of good reasons why we do this. And um, it comes during this time when we're talking about Resurrection Road. And so we talk about this in that context is that as we live this life, and as we go through this life, and as we deal with our circumstances and situations, and there's so many different ones, and I can't even get that specific, as we deal with our circumstances and situations, we always have a choice, don't we? We have a choice that we can deal with those, look at those things, positive or negative. We can look at life and what happens to us in life. We can be optimistic. We can be pessimistic. We always have a choice. And we know that sometimes some of the things that happen to us and some of the things that we're going through, that we have a choice. We can either cry about it or what? Laugh. Right. And, and so when we talk about Wednesday Night Live and doing Wednesday Night Live, <clears throat> It's not about coming out here and just, you know, uh, doing jokes for the sake of jokes. You can get that at a comedy club. It's about coming in and, and trying to laugh, not to be mean, not to make fun, none of that. Not to tear people down, but as a way to come together as God's people, to laugh together. It draws us together in community, and that's why it's appropriate to do in Holy Week during, uh, during Resurrection Road um, about how we understand our life. So that's where we're headed tonight. It's Wednesday Night Live. It's the second time we've done it. How many of you were here at the first Wednesday Night Live? Okay. So we we're hoping that we didn't set the bar high, right? That's why we had Jimmy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nowhere but up after that. <laughs> we didn't want to set the bar high. No, we, we tried to, right? <laughs> I got in trouble with that. I mean... I know. Um, so we'll have Joey next month. Is that? Is that <laughs> um, so, but we, we want to do this absolutely in the vein of worship. And it is April Fool's Day. How many of you knew that? It was April Fool's Day. All right. Chris Myers got me first thing this morning. I'm, I, I, I'm walking out of the house and I get this text from Bear and it says, hey, I just read that Toyota is um, buying Harley Davidson. They want to get into the motorcycle business. And I stopped... <laughs> And I went back in the house, got my iPad. I did. I just, I looked it up. I'm flipping through. Like, it must not be in the news. must be on Google Web. And I'm looking at it. You would too, wouldn't you? Because I'm like, oh, the last time that happened, AMF bottom, and it was a tragedy. It was the terrible motorcycles. I can't believe they did this. If I'm going to get a new bike, I better get one this week. Where's Alana? So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This week. So anyway, then Bear's like, Happy April Fool's. So I, so I said, ah, okay, that's a good one. The only April Fool's that I did today was I texted Emily, my daughter, who I love, and said, hey, um, <clears throat> you know what? I decided that we're going to have Easter a week later. And so if you could come back two weekends in a row, that'd be great. Um, you know, like I have the power to put Easter off a week. <laughs> She's so sweet. She wrote back. She goes, 
oh, Dan, I'm sorry. I'm not going to be able to make it back in two weeks. You know, it's like, well, that's okay. I really can't postpone Easter for a week. <laughs> We're not Greek Orthodox. So anyway, <laughs> anyway, we, we, uh, we welcome you here tonight. I'm glad that you're here. And uh, I want to move us to, uh, to taking a deep breath. We do this every time, and tonight's no different. It's been a long day. It's been a long week. Take a deep breath with me, will you? And let me call out to God for us. Lord God, thank you for this day. And I thank you for every single person that you brought into this place. I thank you, Lord, for this church. And uh, for those that have been here a long time, and for those that are just brand new, that maybe even just brand new tonight, Lord God, I don't think it's an accident that you brought us together here tonight. I think that you want to do something with us. I think that you want to do something in us and through us. So Lord God, I pray that you bless our time here tonight. I pray that you bless it and that you produce fruit from it. I pray that when we walk out of here tonight, Lord, that we will know that we've been in your presence, that we will know that we belong to you, that you love us, and that no matter what we're going through, Lord, we're going to be okay. We're going to be all right because you are our God and you care about what happens to us. I pray all this in Jesus' name. And God's people says, amen. amen. Well, then let's move on to uh, something that we, I guess we've set the bar for this, and so we've got to do it every time. Tonight's top 10 list. Are you ready for the, the top 10 list uh, for this week? Yeah, there we go. A little enthusiasm is okay. Hey! We decided to do the top 10 rejected sermon titles. Uh, you know, uh, this, this can't a, be good. There's a lot of work that goes into this, and I put, kind of come up with the sermon and run it by the staff, and so we thought we'd share with you some of the ones that weren't going to work. It sounded like a good idea at the time, like, hey, let's do a, how about I do a sermon on this? Everybody will really, really like it, but um, common sense prevailed, and we decided not to do these, so here we go. Um, number 10, um, number 10 sermon, confessions of my, confession of my personal sins. <laughs> no. It's too long a sermon for you. It would have been. <laughs> right. Pack a lunch. We're yeah. going to be here. Uh, yeah. Uh, number nine, the road to hell and uh, who you will see there. Just kind of nice. <laughs> thought that'd be helpful for some of you. Just who can you expect to see? Uh, uh, that was rejected. Number eight was rejected. Uh, uh, number eight is communion. This blood's for you. We thought that was... <laughs> All of you Budweiser fans probably got that one right away, didn't you? Um, no, that's too, too much. Um, then we also kind of looked at this variation of a theme. I thought, hey, how about the most outrageous confessions I've ever heard? I'll just share some of those with everybody. No, um, uh, Kim said no. It didn't make it. Yeah, it didn't go. No, we didn't want to do that one. So then I had this idea. I said, what about vacation slides from Sturgis? And then... Um, it was rated PG-13. PG-13. <laughs> what are you laughing about, Aaron? You were there with me. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well... That would be a day we'd have children's, children's church. church available down <laughs> for the sure. Hall, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, that was rejected. Um, so then we we kept working on this and said, well, what about this first sermon? How about giving to God? Who are the deadbeats? <laughs> so we would just list, just kind of give a list of who's not given. And then we decided, well, what if we did one that's kind of a variation of our mission here at Grandview? We thought this I was thought a this brilliant. One was golden. And Terry and Brandy said no. So, um, but we like this one. Love God. Or it was love Tom, love Alec, and serve us breakfast. Is <laughs> I like French toast, but... Guess not, okay? <laughs> so then we looked at this. This was rejected. People who should leave our church. We <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> See you, Josh. <laughs> hey, that Just... one worked. All right. <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, here's the number two uh, uh, rejected sermon title. Um, they didn't think this would work. Sin in our congregation. Who did what and when? <laughs> How many of you would like that one? Would you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, we'll do that one. Not All right. Many. Not that many. Not that many. And the number one rejected sermon title was, shut up, pay attention, I'm talking now. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Our top 10 list. All right, here's the thing. Here's where we're going tonight. This is part of the heart of what we do at Wednesday Night Live is um, we have an opportunity to talk to somebody that's engaged in ministry, that's doing things. Um, that's, that was the vision that drew this, that drove this, saying what if we had some kind of way 
to talk and to have even talk back, opportunity for people to ask questions. And um, the, the idea started a couple years ago. Matt Booth mentioned it to me and said, hey, you should do something with like to, to engage um, the congregation, kind of like a talk show type format or whatever. And the idea percolated and, and, and kicked around and then said, you know, I really like that idea. And so um, tonight, um, no exception, we have an opportunity to visit with somebody um, who I literally met this person within the first five minutes, the first time I came into Grandview to talk about coming here, about the possibilities of coming to be the pastor here. In February of 2009, um, I met this person, and um, I, I was looking at it saying, you know, she's been a part of everything here at Grandview um, that we've done. She's been a part of, um, you know, s certainly the, the, the tough times, some of the tension um, she's served in a variety of ways, but she's served faithfully, and she's served with a good attitude and um, prayerfully. I've also watched this person. I've also watched her grow, and that's one of the joys I get of being a pastor. I've watched her and, and, and have heard from her about her spiritual growth and how um, she's changed because she's a part of things, and she's very much a part of things. So it's a big honor and privilege to have Don Atkins come down here and be interviewed. Don, let's welcome her. You're going to sit right here. Wasn't that a great introduction? That was a great introduction from the first 10 minutes. And uh, she was one of the no votes, like when they asked you, what do you think? Have Tom come? No, no, no I was not. You you I was not. All right. So you got your mic on. Yep. And um, so we always start with the basics so people kind of get to know who you are. Um, they know your name, obviously. Um, so tell us the basics, Don, where you uh -huh. grew up and went to school and that sort of thing. I grew up in Dubuque. I'm from here. My, pretty much my whole family's here still. Um, went to senior, went to UNI, became a teacher. I did a couple years in Texas just because I could. You know, it was sure. Texas sure. is, a I love Texas, but my family was here. You were home, because you were homesick when you were yeah, down in Texas. I was. Remind me, well, you were by San Antonio. I was. Down by San Antonio. Uh -huh. Went down to Texas. Yeah. And, uh, and it's hot down there. It's you, hot. Mm -hmm. Okay. And there was no seasons. Yep, I understand yeah, that. Yeah. Um, so um, now you're where? You're teaching where? Table Mound, table third mound. grade. How many of you knew that? She was Table Mound. Yeah. Third grade teacher at Table Mound. One of my students is over there. Really? You got yeah. some of your students here? That's cool. Amanda. Yeah. Okay, okay. And that's right. Yeah, Amanda's here. And you're actually master's. You have a master's I degree? I do, a master's and, in and technology. Teaching. Yep. Yep, um, and teaching. And um, so... Um, Moving to a more serious question, you know, I'd ask you this, and I asked you about it last night, because I think as a way for people to get to know you, um, who's your favorite Disney princess? <laughs> Cinderella. Cinderella. It is, Cinderella. Why? Because when I was little, we had gotten those cardboard books. I don't know if anyone remembers them, the cardboard books, and they were like all the Disney's books. Yeah, like little golden book type thing. Yeah, kind of yeah. thing, and they, we had gotten them in the mail, and I remember that was the first book I got, and I remember sitting down and reading that one with my mom. Wow. Cinderella. Yeah, I still have it. St that's pretty yeah. cool. And she wears the yellow dress, right? Mm, no. The blue. Blue. Thank you very much. <laughs> a little if you don't have <laughs> if you don't have girls in the house, I mean obviously I don't anymore or I didn't pay attention. They all have a different color. <laughs> right? I mean they all have a different color, right? They like do. yellow, they blue, yeah, she's this blue. and that. Right? Blake, what color is it again? Good, good answer, Blake. <laughs> yeah, way to, way to play your man card. Okay. Um, <laughs> that was a trick question for Blake, Gene. Like, if he would have said, what color is her? Blue? Blue. We would have said, hey. So, anyway. Um, he has so, a sister. That's true. That's true. Is Emily here tonight? Emily is here. Okay. Good, good. Well, so, that's good to know. I think that, so, did you take the quiz online, though? Some people take the quiz online. No, I did not. Has anybody taken the quiz on Facebook? Your who, which Disney princess are you? I have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good work, Alec. Who'd, who'd you show up as? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, I'll keep an eye on the pumpkins <laughs> and the mice. And, uh, so when you're, when, hey, when you're not working, when you're not teaching school, and when you're not serving at Grandview, because you do a lot of things here at Grandview, yep. what are some of the things you like to do? Um, I've got some nieces that I spent a lot of time with. Actually, we got a picture of them yeah, right there. Yeah, there they are. There. Um, yep. They live in Maquoketa, so then I get them like probably once a month at least. They spend the weekend with me. Yep. So I spend a lot of time with the girls, and I love to read. I love to be outside. I love to hike, run. Good. Yeah, just yeah. a lot of those different things. Well, um, 
you know, one of the other serious questions that I gave to you this week is that um, uh, if, if there was such a thing as a time machine, where would you go? Where would you go in a time machine? You know, I love history. So yeah? you could put me any place in history. You know, the first one I would, of course, would go back to um, time of Jesus. Yeah? I think I would love to see that, his ministry. But, like, you could put me in 1800 Victoria, England. Um, I would love to see, like, 1920s in the United States. Um, Little House on the Prairie, that era, the 1800s with the... Yeah. Yeah. Are anytime. you reading that in third grade? The third graders read Little uh, House books? Oh, they don't anymore. Oh, they don't. What a they shame. Don't. It is a shame. It's a great book. Yeah. How many of you read Little House books? Come on, be honest. The whole series. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Some of you youth over there are missing out on Americana. You need to read those. Great books. To. Lauren Burquist, have you read them? Oh. I think everybody should go, aw. Oh. <laughs> if your father was here, I'd make sure. Oh, he is. Hey, Larry. <laughs> I want to put that on our list. Turn off the TV, Lauren. <laughs> it's a long, cold, cold winter. So thank you, Larry. <laughs> She might be an engineer someday. <laughs> you know, so, uh, yeah, that's good. Well, I want to talk a little bit about Grandview, though, because uh -huh. um, when did you start attending Grandview United Methodist Church? I was baptized at Grandview, actually. Really? Yeah, I was at the okay. old Grandview. Okay. Reverend Paulson. And the only reason I know his name is because there's a picture. Yeah. Yeah. So Reverend Paulson was in my parents and my grandparents and my great-grandparents. They all grew up with Grandview, so longtime members. We... So we did a little bit when I was younger, but I really started about 12 years ago coming to church. Okay, so right before made the move out here. You yeah, were, right you before got the active. move. Yeah, a, not even active. I would say once or Christmas every once in a while. So you, were, you were a submarine member, one of those that surfaced at Christmas and Easter. Very Just much. Kinda yep, that's, and that's about it. That's yeah. all we did for a while. I used yeah. to call them C&Es, but I like submarine better. It's new. Submarine members just surfaced. Yeah. So. What do you remember from that time when you started to get involved, though? Because so you were part of the, that work of your old Grandview, and then all of a sudden, yep. they're they're here. They're here. Yeah, it was, it was, it was a big change. Yeah, a big change. Because one of the things is I was always going to the traditional service there, and then we came here, and then I was invited by the old drummer, and he's like, "You got to come to the nine thirty, the um, contemporary." Then. Yeah. He's Not like, this old drummer. No, 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 Jimmy. no. Okay. Not Jimmy. <laughs> the, uh, the O, the drummer before, Jimmy. Okay, I couldn't resist yeah. that, Jimmy. That was great, this, uh, that old drummer. Okay, so the drummer so, invited you to come, said, yeah. hey, come check us out. Yeah. And you're like, well, I'm already kind of part of it. I'm Grand kind Group. of part of it, but I never had been to the, um, the contemporary, and so he invited me, and I'm like, this is really good. Really? So we started coming a little bit, but not very much, just okay. a little bit. And the next thing you knew, you were on the Staff Parish Relations Committee. Yeah, like, kind <laughs> of. <laughs> I got a call one day, and they're like, hey, do you want to do this? It's only once a month. You know, just, it's just, it's no big deal. It's really easy. How many of you ever heard that speech before? <laughs> Not from oh, me, but. <laughs> don't worry about it. It's easy. Yeah. yeah, and next thing I know, I'm deciding whether or not Tom should be my pastor. That yeah. was the, that was what we did. That it was, was hard. It was hard. <laughs> it was. Hard. <laughs> it was. Yeah. <laughs> Where's that list of top ten? <laughs> People who should leave our... <laughs> yeah, no, that, no, that's true, because all of a sudden you found yourself yes. involved, yep. and, and it was a different time for Grandview, and so yes, you were involved was. in some pretty big things. Um, in the staff parish, I told you there was going to be a little education here. Staff parish, um, at that time we didn't do the single board, and mm -mm. so it was a standalone group, and decided things about staff and pastors and this and that. And uh, so you were part of that. And as mm -hmm. I said, that's where I, met, I, I first met you. Um, since that time, though, you've served, that was in 2009. Yep. And, and so since that time, you've served in several different ways here at Grandview. I mean, think about yeah, some of the ways you've served. Yeah, I mean, served. I've been in the nursery. I've been in children's church. I was at an education advisory team. Right now, I'm a part of the youth group. <laughs> yeah. And then um, I'm right now on also ad board. Yep. So. One of our administrative board leaders. Yep. Yep, and uh, you have to work with, yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't that cool? And of course, that's part of, partly why um, I wanted you to be an administrative board member, because we have people on the ad board that are engaged and involved and know what's going on, mm -hmm. and people that are, that are influential, um, meaning that, um, you know, people listen to you and follow you, and Gabe and Corey follow you they no matter do. what, right? Yeah, they always listen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
That better be your answer. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, that's why you're on there. Um, and so um, I've certainly watched that, Don, in all the different ways that you serve. And some of you, some of you, have you ever served with Don? I mean, you've had a chance to serve with her on some different things? Sure, sure. Now let's vote if, whether you like her. No, we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. Okay. Kim, I want li- Kim likes me. <laughs> yeah, Kim likes everyone. <laughs> She even likes Aaron. <laughs> Not you, Bear. Sorry, I misspoke. Um, here was a question we talked about that we thought would be fun, a fun question. Mm-hmm. And that's that question, if you knew that you would not fail, and you knew that we'd have all the resources, that we'd need people, money, whatever, what do you dream about? What do you dream about Grandview United Methodist Church? What would you do, knowing we wouldn't fail? There's two things that we had talked about. One was the coffee house. I love the idea of the coffee house. I mean, it's not just for the youth group. It's for everybody. I mean, it's a great time. There's no place in Dubuque like it. You know, what a chance to do mission in Dubuque. You know, what a chance to have an environment where you can go with your kids and you know that it's going to be a safe and, oh, I don't know what the word, I mean, it's just a safe atmosphere. And you don't have to worry about what's on the radio and you don't have to worry about what people are doing. Right. Where you have a chance to do some mission work. Yeah. I mean, for me, that's just like, I think that'd be a great Slam idea. Slam dunk. You really Very love much. that idea? Good. Absolutely. The other is kind of the expansion onto um, Grand View. And the reason for that is because I do a lot of Sunday school here. A lot of Sunday school. I love Sunday school. I love learning about the Bible. And we are jam-packed on Sunday mornings at yep. 930. Yep. The last one I did with Tom Bond, which was m- amazing, which was the Patriarchs of the... Um, Bible, we were in the co- the copy room. Yeah, in the copy room in the office. Yeah, and the people are up there, and they're up there, and it's just kind of crazy. I mean, just like, just thinking if we had so much more room, how many more Sunday school classes we could have? And not just for kids, but for adults. Because like yeah. I said, I love them. I love yep. going to them. I learned so much from them. It, you know, what, what do you think? Pretty good goals? You guys like those two goals? The Christian Coffee House? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and the expansion, you know, the expansion of our building, which is something, you know, that we've, that we've dreamed about. Um, and, you know, they're almost kind of related. I mean, when we talk about space, that's always been the thing with any church is, mm-hmm. is when you outgrow your space, you, you only have two choices. You can, you can decrease people or increase space. And so, of course, the coffee shop, you know, doing a coffee house wherever that would land is not about selling coffee. It's about community. It's what you said about providing safe space. But it also, you know, can be a short-term fix for some of our space mm-hmm. needs. Yep. And um, so hopefully, you know, God blesses that is, is what we're after. You know, the last thing I wanted to talk about is, and as I said, it's, it's as much as you're comfortable talking about, mm-hmm. Don. But um, as I shared, as I'm sure you were listening, because I don't think you were nervous. No, no not at yeah. You weren't I, nervous yeah. at all. Lauren was comforting me back there. Really? Lauren Berkowitz? Yes. Who doesn't read books? Yeah. Lauren? That- <laughs> Thanks, Lauren. Maybe you'll be a nurse. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> sorry, Larry. No engineering. She can't read. Um, so, but I don't know if you heard, if you heard this or not. I don't know if you heard about. But I talked about you know that, and mm-hmm. that's personal and honest and, and sincere about your growth, about mm-hmm. watching your growth. Yeah. And I think that's powerful, not just for the youth, um, for the youth to know that, but for everybody else. And so, as much as you're comfortable sharing some of that about your journey, a little bit of your journey, where you've been? Sure. Um, If you would have asked me about 10, 12 years ago if I was a Christian, my answer would have been yes, I'm a Christian. I believe in Jesus. I believe in God. But, you know, that kind of sums up the whole answer. Right. I mean, that was it. Like, there was nothing else to that answer. So when you ask that question, who is Jesus to me, that was my answer, literally. He's the son of God. And there was nothing else. Um, and then my answer's changed now. It's just the definition of who is Jesus. He's my savior. He's my comforter. He's my guide. He's my teacher. I mean, all these things have changed. Uh-huh. Um, and part of the way they changed was um, my mother got sick. And uh, May of 2005, we found out she had non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And when you find out a loved one is sick, your life changes in an instant. Yeah. It does, and the one thing I needed was God, and I mean, I knew, I mean, He was always there, and I look back, and I always see Him in my life in the past, but I never reached out for Him. I never had a relationship with Him at all, 
And in that instant that I found out my mom was sick and we knew she was dying, it changed everything. And I opened myself up to God and I began a relationship with him that has just all, it's evolved in the past 10 years. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's become my savior. He's become my strength. Um, I was the caretaker for my mother, which I'm so grateful I had that opportunity. Yeah, when you are able to do that for a parent or a loved one, it's the best experience because I was there with her all the time. My sister was pregnant. My brother was in California. My other brother was working a lot. And I was just, it was just like the best time. But God saw me through that. Yeah. I mean, that his strength, because I, there's no way I could have done that all my, by myself. You know, being a caretaker is difficult. Yeah, to I mean, I agree. say the I, least. Yep, and some, You've some done people it. know that. Yep, some yes. people know that, um, yeah. doing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then it's just changed and it's involved. And part of that, I credit to you, and I've, I've told you this before. I credit it to you because I made that change with God and my relationship with God early on when my mom was going through it, but it wasn't enough for me. Uh -huh. I made that change, and then I started coming to church a lot, and I was a Baxter in church, but it still wasn't enough. And you talk about being fed, and you talk about if you're not fed, it can't sustain you throughout the week. And I remember t you talked several times you've said that, like once is not enough. Right. You can't come to Sunday and just be here on Sunday and be like, oh, that's it. I'm going to have this great relationship with God. One of the youth group, one of the girls, we have um, discussions a lot with the kids, and they say a relationship is, because they have a lot of relationship issues. Imagine that. They're in middle school. <laughs> really? <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah, a lot of that. And <laughs> <laughs> so one of the girls is like, you know what? If that person is not giving you, putting any effort into you, putting anything into your relationship, it's not a relationship. It's just a one-sided yeah. deal. And that's how it was with God for me in a long time. He was doing what he needed to do, but I was not doing anything. What a great example. Yeah. Yeah, it really was. I just, I wasn't doing anything about God. I wasn't, he wasn't in my life. So you came and then you had this crazy idea. Which one? The cell group. <laughs> no, okay. You had this crazy <laughs> idea. You had the cell group idea. And you started saying, I, you had one of those big, B-hags? B-hags, yeah, big, hairy, audacious. And I was in that room with 20, how many of those, maybe 20 of us? Yeah, we started with 20. Yep. 20 of us in that room, and you're like, we need to, this is a great idea. This is a way to make connections with people. This is a way to learn the Bible. And it was, it was what I needed. So it's a way to be held accountable for what we are doing and as Christians. And there's, you know, we've got a picture of your yeah, cell group. Yeah, that's my cell you know, group. Yep. Um, <clears throat> that's an important part of your life and it probably really a part is. of your growth. Those people are very important to me. I meet with them every Tuesday, and I just, I very, very much enjoy meeting with them. I've grown so much listening to them, learning from them, absolutely. Yep. Yeah. That is such a powerful testimony to hear that, Don. And especially if you have worked with Don and been around Don, uh, maybe you didn't know that. And that's part of why we do this. Mm -hmm. So you can understand this, that this is real, not, not coached at all. I, I, it, you, is it okay if, if anybody had any questions? They can oh, ask yeah, any questions. Absolutely. Kim, well, you mind maybe, grabbing that mic? <laughs> we'll, we'll try and moderate them, okay? And so um, what I'll do is um, I kind of know some of the characters here. But here's what I want to say to you, church, is that you just heard this powerful uh, testimony um, from Don that was real. It was unvarnished. It was unrehearsed. So, yeah, if you've got a question about that or something, be nice is what I'm trying to say because we've got a bunch of kids here. That's right. <clears throat> right. So um, be nice. But if you've got a question that you'd like to ask Don, just raise your hand, and Kim will come find you, and you fire away. All right. Todd's there in the back. Since we have a lot of adults here tonight, Don, what do you see as the biggest need for the youth right now, and how can we address that as a congregation? We need more help with the youth. Um, I, um, we have three of us that are running the youth group now, and all of us, three of us, we love it very much. We love being with the kids. I can't tell you, I've learned so much from those kids. It's amazing, but we need more help. We need a, definitely another wolf, female in there. But we'd also eventually, we would like to break the high school off. That's one of our goals, is to have a high school and a middle school because they don't mix very well sometimes. 
a lot of times they yeah. don't mix very well. Oil and water. <laughs> they are kind of like oil and water. I mean, they really are, especially those young ones when they come in in the sixth grade and then you got the 10th grader, it's just, it doesn't run. So we're really looking for more help with the youth that just want to be, I mean, they're great kids. We have a lot of fun. Uh, like I said, I have learned so much from those kids. Yeah. And they are, they're, they're great kids. So that's what we're looking for is more help for the youth group. Excellent. Excellent. Anybody else have a question I want to fire up here, Don? Lois got one. See, I see your hand, Will, but I, I also sneak in my Lauren, exercise when I, I can. I see Lauren grinning, so I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Don, I'm asking this question uh, because I've heard my own daughter ask, ask me this question, and that is, is how did you develop your relationship with God? Basically, I just, I mean... I had to surrender. I just had to reach out to him and say, here I am. I mean, this, and then I had to start having a conversation with God every day, multiple times throughout the day. And that's kind of where it started is just op me begin opening up, me not, or me just praying, very much praying. And that's what I've talked about with a lot of the kids is just, Start it with just praying. Have that open line of communication. Sure. So in other words, it's not complicated. It doesn't take uh, rocket science. No. You, you don't have to be, uh, like, have the Bible memorized. No. Um, you don't have to have all that stuff. And I know that you guys teach that to mm -hmm. the kids as mm -hmm. well. And, and I, I know Gabe and Corey, and I know where their hearts are. And, um, you know, church, I've got to tell you, if you don't know this already, it is that God has blessed us with three adults that are willing to be here every Wednesday. And to, to spend time with our youth. And, our, and I like to tease the kids and, and, and have fun with the youth whenever I can. I don't get to spend time with them that much. We have some wonderful, awesome youth here. We do. And part of that is to be accredited to, yes, to their parents. But the three of you, the three, these three people spend time with the kids every month, every week. <laughs> faithfully. They come faithfully. Um, and, uh, you know, setting a model for our youth and setting a model for how to serve God um, that is uh, uh, commendable. It's bright and shiny. So, um, well, here's we're, we're about out of time. Here's what I would like to do. I'd like to, Will, do you have a good question? <laughs> well, okay. How do you feel about Corey's joke? <laughs> <laughs> no comment. No comment on Corey's joke. No. Okay. All right, Will LaFoe. Who is your favorite person in youth group? Oh. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> That's like, well, that's like asking your mom who her favorite kid is. <laughs> yeah, well, you're an only child, so I think that works pretty well. What I want to do is I want us to pray for Don, and, uh, and um, then, then we will thank her, and then we're going to stand up and uh, have a benediction, and we're going to sing. So, Don, let, let's all be in an attitude of prayer, please. Lord God, I thank you for your child and for your servant, Don. I thank you that, that she has been open and that uh, she surrendered, and that you've been at work through her, through her cell group, through, through Sunday school, through Christian concerts, through her, through her nieces, through the youth. Lord, you've been using all these different means to raise her up and to, to get through to her, and, and it's, it's happening. So I thank you, Lord, for her witness. I, I, I pray that you continue to use her, work through her, protect her, send your angels to surround her wherever she goes. I pray this in Jesus' name, and all of God's people say, Amen. 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 All right. Let's. Uh...